Amen. So we're going to finish up Hosea chapter number five, the last couple of verses uh, this evening. So look down at Hosea chapter number five. Last week we looked at uh, Judah and how Judah did not keep the proper boundaries between Israel and Judah. And that's why they're lumped into the judgment that is happening in this chapter that's going to happen. And we see um, during Hezekiah's time that they were actually um, overrun slightly um, by the Assyrians. It wasn't nearly as bad as and devastating and, and complete as it was for the northern kingdom of Israel. But this is the warning that um, Judah ignored from God. All right, look down at verse number 11. We're going to pick things up here. We're going to end um, this chapter tonight. But look down at verse number 11. It says Ephraim. This is, again, the, the large tribe that many times is just equated um, to the northern kingdom of Israel, is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore, I will be unto Ephraim as a moth and to the house of Judah as rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, they went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob, yet he could not heal you nor cure you of your wound. It's ironic that they went to help. It's kind of like um, that's kind of the same idea of going to Egypt for help and going to the world um, for help as we study through that sermon series. They were supposed to turn um, to the Lord and they didn't. They turned to, um, ironically, the Assyrian king who ended up uh, being the one and not that king, but he being, being the nation or the empire um, that overran them um, in the end. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. Meaning, you know, just letting you know that even though it is Assyria that comes um, to take over um, Israel and destroy the northern kingdom of Israel, that it's really God that's doing that. It's really God's judgment, just as with Babylon taking Judah into captivity. Yes, it's Babylon that does that, but it is God's, they are a tool of God's judgment. All right, then same thing with um, uh, the, the nation of Assyria. Look at verse number 15. And I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. So that's what we're going to look at this evening, this last verse specifically. So God is declaring all this judgment that is coming um, because of the things that they've been doing in the last uh, few chapters that Hosea is demonstrating um, to them. But then he says to them, I'll return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, and there's some things that we're going to look at in detail in this verse at the end of the sermon, but what I want to look at first is this comment where he says, they will seek me early. They will seek me early. All right, so what does that mean? All right, this is what we're going to look at um, this evening, and that's kind of the title of the sermon, is seeking the Lord early, seeking the Lord early. This is where God wants them to be, and this is where he predicts that they will be after this affliction comes to them. Early means, you know, it's not what we would really think. Early just means before, all right? That's what it means. So early means before other things. So if you're early, you're before. If you're early to something, you're before other people. If you're the earliest person, you're before the other people that get there, all right? So what early means is before other things. There's some applications of this in the Bible that we're going to look at. So we're going to do a little bit of a Bible study here, and then we're going to apply this um, to what the Bible says in our lives and how it affects us today. Look at Psalm chapter 33, if you would. Keep your place in Hosea chapter number 5, but turn over to Psalm chapter number 63, and we see this statement come up again in Psalm chapter number 33. So early just means before, before other things, before other people, before. All right, look at Psalm chapter number 63. Look at verse number one. The Bible says this, and I want you to bookmark this verse as well because we're going to flip back to this verse towards the end of the sermon. So you're going to keep your place in Hosea chapter number five and Psalm chapter number 63. But look at verse number one. The Bible says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for, thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. We're going to look at that in a few minutes, but look at verse number two. It says, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. 
I will lift up the, my hands in thy name. So he's talking about he's going to worship the Lord. He's going to acknowledge the Lord. Is there a water somewhere? Did someone bring that up? They're going to acknowledge um, the Lord. But look in verse number one. He says, I, he says, early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. So just as Hosea chapter number five, we see in Psalm chapter 63, David, the psalmist is saying, I'm going to seek the Lord early. Okay. Flip over to Psalm chapter number five now. So what does that mean? Let's look at what this means um, early, seeking the Lord early. I'm going to give you three kind of categories where this could apply in the Bible, and I'll give you some, uh, some, some Bible verses to kind of back that up. But look at Psalm chapter number five, and look at verse number one. The first thing that it means is, you know, time, early in time. And it's specifically in Psalm chapter five, it's talking about, early in the day, all right? So the first thing that it could talk about is before the day starts, all right? Look at verse number one. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. Look at this in verse number three. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. So, we see this example in Psalm chapter 5 of a very specific example of seeking the Lord early in the day, all right? Like a, just a specific time, all right? Just seeking the Lord as the what? As the first, if, if you're early, you're the first person there. If you're, you know, if you have something that's early, it's the first thing there, all right? It, this is talking about the first thing in the day that you do. The earliest thing that you do is you seek the Lord. He prays to the Lord early in the morning, all right? Before you think of anything else, before you seek anything else, you seek the Lord. So that's the first example is just of seeking the Lord early, is just early in the day, early in the morning, early in, you know, time, all right? And I'm gonna kind of broaden that application here in just a few minutes, but that's the first thing, seeking the Lord early every single day, all right? That's what the psalmist is talking about. Now. Go to Daniel chapter number six. Go to Daniel chapter number six. Because Daniel, in many other places in the Bible, we see people praying at other times other than early in the morning. All right? So obviously seeking the Lord early has to mean something more than just early in the daytime. All right? So look at verse number 10 of Daniel chapter number six as, a, as an example of this. And then we'll go to some more applications of seeking the Lord early. All right, look at Daniel 6.10. The Bible says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, this is, you know, the writing against praying to God, basically, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So Daniel was just accustomed to just praying three times a day. And look, he didn't pray three times a day, you know, at five-minute intervals in the morning, all right? He was praying throughout the day, probably in the morning, at noon, and in the evening is what, you know, most people would assume there. So the point is, you can pray at any time during the day, but the psalmist definitely says that, hey, you know, you should seek the Lord early in the day, early in time, all right? Go to Isaiah chapter number 55. Let's look at another example of seeking the Lord early. So we see that it could be early in time, early in the day. Every day, you know, you should seek the Lord the first thing that you do. Which brings me to my next point. You should seek the Lord before things happen. Early in, you know, events, before things go, go on in your life. Look at Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 6 for another example of seeking the Lord early. All right? The Bible says in verse number 6 of Isaiah 55, it says, Seek ye the Lord, look at this, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. You should seek the Lord while he may be found. You should seek him while you are close to him. You should seek him before. Turn to Micah chapter number three. 
Turn to Micah chapter number three. You're like, well, duh. But what's the problem that Israel's having? The problem that Israel's having is they're not close to the Lord. And they're not seeking him. And this is kind of goes to the whole point of what God is saying at the end of Hosea chapter number five. And kind of the whole point of the sermon of seeking the Lord early. Yes, seek him in the morning. Get up and seek the Lord and pray to God the first thing before you start setting your mind to other things during the day. But you should also seek the Lord early in your life while he may be found. You say, well, what do you mean while he may be found? Look at Micah chapter 3 and verse number 4. Because you could get to a point as Israel was to a point. Look at verse number 4 of Micah 3. It says, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but look at this. But he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they behave themselves ill in their doings. So Isaiah 55 is saying, seek the Lord before this happens. He's saying, seek the Lord early. Seek the Lord. If you want to apply this to a saved person, this is talking about seeking the Lord while you're right with the Lord. Seeking the Lord while you have a good relationship with him. Because if you have a good relationship with the Lord, guess what? He is near, as Isaiah chapter number 55 says. Look, this sermon is counterintuitive. And if you're thinking about it, you are, look, the Bible is literally saying the best time to seek God is when you are close to him and when you have a good relationship to him. The flip side is the Christian that just dials 911 after they turn their back on God. This is not the ideal way to have a relationship with the Lord. This is what most people do. Turn back to Hosea chapter number 5. And what the Bible is telling us here, it will be less effective than if you seek him early. Look at Hosea chapter 5 and just look at verse number 6 in the very same chapter. The Bible says, look, this is what most people do. Most people seek the Lord after they've turned their back on him. And it's not as effective. Why? Look at verse number 6 for an example. They shall go with their flocks and their herds to what? To seek the Lord. But they shall not find him. Why? Because he's not near anymore. He hath withdrawn himself from them. The Bible, God is trying to tell us in the Bible, throughout the Bible, and this is just an object lesson in what Psalms is telling us, Isaiah is telling us, Micah is telling us. This is just an object lesson. Of, hey, seek him while you're near him. That's the time to seek him in your life. Seek him what? Early. Early. Turn to Hosea chapter 4, just one chapter back. So we should seek him early in the day. We should seek him early in time. And I'm going to expand on that in a few minutes. But we should seek him. We should seek him while we are close to him. Before we get far away from him. And the last thing is, we should seek him before, meaning early, we should seek him before everything else. All other things. Not a time, but before all other interests that we have. All right, look at Hosea chapter number 4. Look at verse number 17. Look at the problem that they were having. It says, Ephraim is what? Is joined to idols. Let him alone. Again, calling out Judah, saying, leave Ephraim alone. Ephraim being that first tribe on the border of Judah, saying, leave him alone. He's joined to idols. He has not seeked the Lord. He's been seeking, Ephraim has been seeking other things before they've been seeking the Lord. And look, idols here can be applied to your life. These idols can be spiritual idols or they can be physical idols. And if you are seeking other things before the Lord, you are not seeking the Lord early. It's talking about putting the Lord first before anything else in this world. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. So look, here's the practical application of this. We just get, I gave you three points on seeking the Lord early. The first one is seeking him early in time. Seeking him early in time. And the, the example that the Bible gave in Psalm chapter number 5 is just praying early in the morning. That's a perfect 
example of just seeking the Lord early in time. But if you just broaden that application and you turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, and we just apply this to our lives, that we should seek the Lord early in time, early, like early every single day, yes, but how about this? How about seek the Lord early in your life, in, just in general, in your life? Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and look at verse number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. See, the practical application tonight is here's what we actually do in our lives. The Bible is telling us, it's giving us this, this advice to when to seek the Lord that seems counterintuitive to us, but the answer or the reason that the Bible has to teach this lesson to us is because this is what we actually do. So you say, you know, we should seek the Lord early in our lives, early in the morning, early every single day, but just in general in our lives. Look, an example of this is if you got saved later in life. Wouldn't it have been better to get saved earlier? Look, I'm thankful that I'm saved. But I think it's best as we raise our children that they learn to seek the Lord early in their lives. Because the earlier you seek the Lord in your life, the less wasted time you're going to have. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and look at verse number 9. This is such a great verse in the Bible. The Bible says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. This is kind of a tongue-in-cheek verse right here. It's saying, hey, young guy, go out and do whatever you want to do. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Rejoice, walk in the ways of thine heart. You know, the heart is deceitful. It's saying, do whatever you think is right. Go out and do what you think feels right for you at that time. And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. So he's not really telling him to do that. He's just saying, hey, go out and just, you know, do what you think is best, teenager. Go out and, you know, think that you've got it all figured out and do whatever you think your little, you know, your merry little heart wants you to do, and you're going to pay for that. Look, it would be better if this young man sought the Lord early and didn't just follow his heart and follow his eyes. I mean, how many young men would be saved from ruining, you know, a decade or more of their life if they just would take this advice. If they would just realize, hey, I shouldn't follow my heart. Now, how many saved young men would not waste years and years of their life if they would just follow this advice? He'd be like, no, no, no. My heart tells me to go and, and, and follow, you know, what the world is telling me to do out here. My eyes want to go out and do these things and go to these places. But you know what? I should just seek the Lord early. I should seek the Lord early. And, you know, but that's what we do. We, we, we go out and we don't seek the Lord. We live our lives how we want. And then we just look back and regret. And the Bible is trying to tell us not to do that. The Bible is trying to tell us, hey, it'd be better, it'd be better if every day... You just seek the Lord early because every day you seek the Lord early is a day that you won't regret. Every day that you seek the Lord, you get up and you make the Lord the first thing that you think about that day is a day that you will not regret in your life. Because the funny thing is, a day and another day and another day and a week and another week and another week adds up to years. And the Bible warns us. The Bible warns us we've only got so much time. We just end up wasting years and years and years of your life. I mean, just before salvation is one thing, but even after salvation, people do this. People will get saved. And then they will just have no desire to seek the Lord early in their life. And they will just waste years, yea, decades of their Christian life doing nothing. And then what's even worse, what's even worse is, is they, then they come to the Lord and they're just like, they want the Lord to just help them pick up all the pieces. So now they want to seek the Lord, but they're looking back at this train wreck and now they've got to get, somehow they've got to get 
past all the entanglements and the train wreck of that, not just wasted time, but broken relationships, broken marriages, broken children, all these different things. And when they were saved the whole time, can you imagine? But this is what people do. And this is why God is saying, hey, just seek the Lord up front. Just seek the Lord early. And just, just avoid all the trouble. Avoid all the inevitable damage. And guess what? If you seek the Lord when you have a good relationship before you turn your back on Him, you have the best access to God at that time. That is when you should be seeking Him because that's when He's going to listen to you. Don't miss that. Look, God, I mean, God will pick up the pieces. And God, all the answers are in the Bible for you to put it all together and get past, you know, everything that's happened to you in your past. And if you've wasted time, you need to just put your hand to the plow. You need to move forward. You need to learn lessons from the things in the past. Understand, use that going forward to be careful and stay away from things that have entangled you in the past. But look, it's better to not do that. That's why when there's all kinds of preaching from the Bible here, and if you got saved when you were 35 or 45 or 55 or whatever it is, and you hear all this preaching from the Bible on, you know, biblical standards, biblical doctrine, and you just get all offended, it's just like you just need to get over yourself because we're talking about the kids here. We're not trying to beat anybody up over their past. We're not trying to beat anybody up that's, you know, been divorced or anything like that. But you better believe that we're going to preach against divorce here. You better believe that we're going to preach on how to have a, a solid marriage that lasts for your entire life on this earth. And what the Bible says and doesn't say about divorce and all these other things that are just commonplace in our society today. So it's about getting forward and not, like, seek it. Look, seek the Lord. You're like, yeah, you know what? I wasted a lot of time in my life. Well, you know what? Tomorrow morning, why don't you start seeking him early? Start seeking him early tomorrow morning. And then for the kids, they can seek the Lord early in their life. They can seek the Lord early in their life. They don't have to go through the things that people that got saved later in life went through. That's the whole idea here. That's the whole point of Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and, you know, really the, the major book of, the book of Ecclesiastes. All right? We have limited time here. Is kind of what, by the, you know, the, kind of what the Bible is trying to tell us here. We should, why not utilize it in the best way? Is, is what God is trying to say here. Seek the Lord early. And then, before all things. Before all things. But what do we do? We put God last in our lives. We put God last in our lives. We put prayer last in our lives. We just forget to pray for days on end, or weeks on end. God forbid, weeks on end. But here's the problem. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I really want to point out the contrast here. And I hope this really sticks out to you tonight. But we just forget about that. We forget about the Bible. We forget about prayer. We forget about the Lord. And literally stop seeking him in our lives. But this is why this is so hard. This is why this is so hard. And look, this is really America's problem right here. Because it's when times are good that we forget the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and look at verse number 10. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and look at verse number 10. So this is really the, the counterintuitive you know, thing in our, in our minds that we need to kind of break free of this evening. But look at verse number 10. I mean, I, the, the Bible is just like, I, I don't know. Like, you know, I've read this so many times and like, when you just apply it, when you're thinking about it, just like things just pop out of you. Look at verse number 10. It says, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou should have eaten... When thou shalt have eaten and be full, he's saying, you have all these good things. 
He's saying, you have, times are good here, folks. Moses is warning them. He's saying, hey, when times are good, when you are living in these great cities, when you are living in, when, when, these, when these, your house is full, I mean, you couldn't even think of the next thing to buy on Amazon. It's so full. You can't think of anything else you could possibly need. I know that's impossible for an American to think, oh, there's always something else. But he's saying, like, the wells are digged, the vineyards are, are, are grown. And look, here's another thing. You didn't do any of it. It was just given to you. I mean, that's a sermon in itself right there, and that's not the point I'm trying to make. But here's the thing. Entitlement does nothing for you. Being handed something does nothing for you. Working, working hard and toiling, it humbles you if nothing else. It keeps you humble. But look at this. Everything's great in verse number 10 and verse number 11. What's the next thing he says? You know what he says? He says, at that moment when everything's great, beware. Things are good? Look, he says, beware, lest thou forget the Lord. Everything's great. Beware. What are you talking about? It's like everything is great. I have everything. I, I, things are good. Beware. We're out there. And everything's going well. We're working hard. But beware. You have blessings that are given to you. Beware. The Bible is telling you. But, I mean, things just given to you that you didn't even you know, do anything. Good things happening to you. Blessings. Everything's working out. Your family's going well. Everything is wonderful. Beware, God says. I mean, go back to Psalm chapter 63. Go back to Psalm chapter number 63, if you would. And let me show you something about Psalm chapter 63, about seeking the Lord early. So the Bible is saying... It's at that time you should be seeking the Lord. Because it's at that time when everything's good, the cities are great, your house is full, the well is full of water, everything is in front of you like you could need nothing else. God says, beware lest you forget the Lord. And the Bible's been telling us on seeking the Lord that that's when we should be seeking the Lord because that's when he's near to us. That's when he's closest to us. But look at Psalm 63 again and look at verse number one. He says, O God, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee because his house is full. But look at, look at this. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth, longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. You know, he's seeking the Lord. Things are not going well for him. He's seeking the Lord in bad times. And look, you will seek the Lord in bad times. But what God is telling you, and he's, he's even predicting in Hosea chapter number 5 that they're going to get right, and they're going to seek me, and they're going to seek me early. But you know what? They should have done it. They should have done it when he was near to them. And that is the lesson. You see, the Christian life is about always being on your toes. That's the Christian life. But the world is like, relax. Relax. It's the opposite of what the world teaches. The world is like, go on this quest for riches. Go, go stack up this, this, you know, just the very idea of retirement. So you can retire and do nothing for the, the, the last 30 years of your life. Just that very idea is, look, is against what the Bible is saying. Because the Bible is saying that it's in the good times that you need to seek the Lord because that's when he's near you. And the Bible is literally giving you this counterintuitive, huge warning where God says, beware. Beware. He says, the better things get. God is begging us throughout the Bible here. He's saying the better things get for you, the more you should be on guard. The more careful you should be in your life. God's warning. When the world is telling you, hey, you've made it now. The world's telling you, you can relax now. When the world's telling you, relax, you've made it, God is saying, beware. Be careful. Because this is when you will forget me. This is when the danger is 
the most real for you. When the house is full, it seems that you need nothing. That is when you will fall. You say, well, I mean, that's why God says, seek me early. Before everything else. You say, well, I, I don't know. How could I possibly do that? Because look, we all do this. Every single one of us does this. Things get good, and we're just like, hey, I got this. And what do we do? We, we, we get relaxed, and we stop seeking the Lord as much as we did when times were hard. Because what's the first thing that we do when things really get tough? And I mean, I don't know. You know, things can get tough for you, not, not historically speaking. But th there will be ups and downs in your Christian life. But when you're down, you, you will start seeking the Lord. And you know you will. Why not seek him when he's close to you, is what the Bible is saying. You say, how could I possibly know? How could I possibly train myself to do this counterintuitive thing? Well, the answer is very simple. The answer is very simple. You just make seeking the Lord part of your daily life. That's what you do. You make seeking the Lord part of your very being. You say, how can I make sure that I don't do what every stupid idiot since the beginning of time has done when things get good and they turn their back and they forget the Lord? How can I make sure that doesn't happen to me and my family? The answer is you make the Lord and seeking him early part of your everyday life. You make it part of your character. You make it part of literally who you are as a Christian. You get up and you go to work every single day. That's part of your character. I mean, the ladies get up and they teach the kids every single day, the homeschooling moms. It's not like they forget that. Hopefully not. But you make it part of who you are. It, it, and God is saying, this should be the foundation, the core of your Christian life, seeking me early. And then you're just seeking him early every day. And when times are good, you're seeking him early. And when times are bad, you're seeking him early. It's simple. God is just saying, I want to be the first and most important part of your life. And it's more important. It's counterintuitive, but it's most dangerous when you have no trouble. Just like I talked about in the first world Christian sermon, that's the most dangerous time for a Christian. Christians have typically throughout history, when they've been persecuted, that's when the gospel just explodes. That's when the gospel goes out to all parts of the world. You just think about Jerusalem in the book of Acts. What happened? They're all kind of huddled up in Jerusalem there. They're all, kinda, they're all just giving all their possessions to the church. They're building this great church in Jerusalem. All of a sudden, you know, Stephen gets killed. And the persecution really comes down on the church. And they all, they take off. They take off, except for a few of the disciples. They take off. They go to Antioch. They start this secondary base in Antioch. And what happens? The three huge missionary journeys are just sent out of that church from Antioch. And, and the, the world receives the gospel. Because of that hard, those hard times. Look, it's, it's not the good times. It's not the good times. But make seeking the Lord part of your life every single day. And look, things are good. Things are good. So just make it part of your character, and then you won't turn the, your back on the Lord ever, whether things are bad or good. All right? That's the whole thing that the Bible is trying to teach us here. All right? It seems counterintuitive that the better things get, the more danger we are in as Christians. But that is the one thing that I need you to take away from this sermon tonight. When things are good, our children are growing up in the Lord, more children are being added to the church. Families, visitors are coming to the church. Babies are being born. All these huge blessings in our lives. Beware. Beware. And seek the Lord early. Remember every single day that it's these times that God, look, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless all of us, but he doesn't want to be far from us either. So just heed this warning. And I mean, that's really the sign of a mature Christian. When things can be good, 
and you can still keep the Lord number one before everything else, that's a mature Christian that's going to go that's going to go for the for the long haul right there. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.